Welcome inside the State Champ Studios for another year of hockey time. I'm Jonathan Kidd along with Sean Belegian. New logo, new theme song, new everything this year. Yeah, fantastic. Same great product on the ice, but uh, Johnny, great to be doing this yeah. again. This is fantastic, so let's get her going. State Champs Hockey Time is presented by our friends at the Alta Equipment Company. Shout out to Chris and Scott for sponsoring Hockey Time again. Yeah, and you know what? I always get these nice beanies. I, I, I get a different one uh, every year, so uh, you know I'm going to keep wearing them. All of our State Champs programming is presented by Lawrence Technological University. To learn more about the LTU hockey team, go to ltuathletics.com. Yeah, looking forward to it. Uh, another good season for Coach Gaffney and the boys. And uh a, a lot of guys that we're familiar with on that roster over the years. All right, Sean, let's get right into it. We're going to go across the state here. And we're going to start in the Upper Peninsula. Well, Houghton is loaded again. Uh, make no mistake about that. Uh, of course, we're going to miss Corey Markham, uh, one of the, the good guys in the business. But let me tell you something. Micah, great guy. I think everybody will find that out. Heck of a coach as well. Uh, they're off to a great start, uh, 4-0. As a matter of fact, uh, we're taping this. Am I allowed to say when we're taping this? Yeah. We're taping this on Wednesday. I know they had a big win last night against the Flivers. Uh, so they're off to a great start. Marquette is off to a 2-2 two and two start. Uh, this is a young team. I think one thing you've seen Coach Garrow do the last few years is he's done a good job of coaching his teams up. I think this Marquette team is going to be tough come playoff time, and you know them. They'll play anybody, anywhere. They go all over the place. Sue is off to a solid 4-1 and one start, and if you remember, Johnny, that was a team that kind of crept up like this, made an appearance in our rankings uh, last year as, as the year went on, so certainly that's a program that's picking it up. Uh, and picking up where they left off last year. Hancock is a really interesting story. I mean, such a proud tradition up there. They're 3-0-1. They've got two wins over uh, Calumet, a win over Alpena. They tied a very good Heartland squad. So I think Hancock is a team to, to keep an eye on. Uh, Calumet, they've got a big weekend coming up. Uh, both Trenton and Howell traveling up there. So uh, Calumet, you know, another young team. Uh, had to replace so many good players, including, a, a, you know, an outstanding goaltender. We'll see what the Copper Kings have to offer this weekend. Let's head to northern Michigan now, and, and it seems like we've talked about Traverse City Central, Traverse City West, the Bay Reps. Alpina had a great run last season. Yeah, they did. Uh, three and one start. Uh, they have a win over Heritage already on the docket. They have a big test coming up this weekend. The Bay Reps, there's so much buzz about the Bay Reps, and uh, they're off to a, a good start. They keep coming on. 3-0, and a heck of a lot of talent there. More on that a little bit, but that should be a huge matchup. Uh, TC West, 1-2 uh, and two start. They did get a win over Mona. I think that looks good on them. And, of course, Coach Givens, I mean, he's one of the legends uh, in the game. Make no mistake about that. 2-1 uh, and one start, but they have one of those weekends going back up uh, to Cotton, uh, Copper Country. They have Houghton and Hancock, so I think we'll find a lot out about TCC and maybe Hancock as well this weekend. You know, we just talked about the nice start that they're off to. Uh, we'll, we'll see what TCC can do heading back up in that area. Just quickly about the Bay Reps. You feel like they're ready to take the next step? Yeah, I, I think last year was a, was a big step for them. And, and I think this year will be another big step. Um, Look, they've done a good job of bringing in talent. And most importantly, John, it isn't just about bringing in the talent. It's developing that talent. It's about coaching up that talent. And you've seen that program go like that. A lot of respect for what they're doing up there. All right, we head to mid-Michigan now. Some great hockey in that area. You got Midland and Midland Dow. Midland Dow won the Division Three state title just a couple years ago. Flint Powers, the defending Division Three state champions. You got Saginaw Heritage and the Bay City Wolves. Yeah, you know, let, let's start with the defending champs. Uh, it, Travis Perry finally got one, you know, with, with all the success they've had. Uh, a, a big time turnover, though. I mean, a lot of guys from that championship team, guys that were part of, of uh, Flint Powers for years, have moved on now. But the one thing that you've seen, if you've been following high school hockey for a while, 
Travis Perry finds a way to reload and he finds a way to coach up a new group of guys. Uh, they're off to a one and one start. Speaking of reloading, Saginaw Heritage always does that. It seems like uh, JJ Bamberger always has a dangerous squad, always has a kid that can make a claim for being on the player of, of the year list, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Big weekend for them. How about Marquette and Brighton coming up? So that'll be really fun to see how that works itself out with Heritage. And, and basically, City, I'm glad you brought them up. That that's a team, you know, John. You and I have been talking about them. I like what they do on social media, but they're making noise on the ice Gunner as well. Weber. Yeah, exactly. You saw them. You saw them take the step up last year, and they're making some noise again with the two and one start. And and Gunner is a guy that so many people have been talking about. So good hockey being played, and teams that are going like this. It's fun to see. We head south to the Lansing area, and Sean. The Capital City Capitals, they beat the East Side Stars in that epic regional final that went to like a million overtimes. And then you also got Jackson Lemon Christie. Yeah, you know what? Uh, I'm glad these are programs that are taking a step up. Let's start with Cap City, 2-0 uh, on the year. Uh, they've got 12 goals in those couple of games. They're getting productivity from a bunch of players. This has been a better team every year. I think I think you could say the whole thing about the Lansing area. Yeah. You know, you're watching the Lansing area kind of go like that. Eastside Stars are another example. 1-0-1 oh, start. They got a goalie that could be potentially on the wall or down the a- road. A- absolutely. Uh, win over Tri-Valley, a tie against Chelsea. So you're seeing them creep up. And uh, I'm intrigued at JLC. I've, I've, I've heard some people kind of whisper that name. Uh, they're 1-0, oh, and they have a big test early how about this jlc taking on east side stars uh this weekend so that'll be one to watch but no it, it i think you know obviously jackson is one different area but but for all three teams i'm intrigued to see what they can do for an encore and build upon some of the noise that they've made uh going in the past couple of years all right we head on over to the west side Sean, we had Forest Hill Central. They made that that run to the semifinals in Division One last year. Byron Center, they were leading Brother Rice in the Division Two state finals. East Grand Rapids, that was a Cinderella run. They almost did it against Flint Powers. And you also got Grand Rapids Catholic Central. You got other teams like Granville, Mona Shores, Rockford. There's a lot of good hockey on the west side of the state. Yeah, there is. And you know what? I, I want to start with Byron Center. I think they're one of the best teams in the state again. You know, you could you could say that years running now. You have to give them a heck of a lot of, of credit. Uh, Jordan is loaded again. They're off to a 4-0 and start. They have it up front. They have one of the best goaltenders in the state. So uh, be on the lookout for BC. Forest Hill Central. Uh, McSween has a team that is dangerous again. Uh, Lipke, another Melock. I think there are 78 Melocks. Uh, the Melocks and the Locuses, my goodness, you could start a small nation with, with the amount of players. Gibby Grendel is a guy that I think you should keep a look on. I, I saw him over the summer. I think he's a, a, a talented, uh, in, incredible defenseman. You know, a, a name that that isn't on our goaltending list right now, but I, I think very well could be just from word of mouth okay. is is Peter Nemers. Uh, you know, I, I had two different coaches tell me how good this kid is. So don't be surprised if, if his name isn't on our goaltending list uh, very, very soon. Glad that you mentioned EGR. What a fantastic run that they had last year. Their social media game is awesome unbelievable. I have to say that's number one. Right now, they're probably number one in, the, in, videos, in the social media game. And, and I'll tell you what, they're, they're going to be vying for number one overall as well. That That is a team that I think Coach Newton demands that you play a certain way and everybody kind of fell in line. And you saw how disciplined they were last year, not only in that upset over over Houghton, but certainly the championship game where they were this close to, to knocking off uh, Flint Powers. But Coach Newton has done a heck of a job there. And then you got a guy like Mike Slobodnik, who's been doing it, well, since forever, really. I mean, 4-0 start for GRCC. Big tilt coming up on Friday. Boy, I wish I could clone myself. Well, That's the, the first cloning time. thing. Here we go again. That's the first time I said it this year. But How many e- times are you going to say it? 100? Oh, 100 times. Easy. 100 times. EGR and GRCC. What a great test early on for two of the best teams on the west side. All right. We're going to have more of our statewide preview coming up a little bit later in the show. All 
right, it's time now for our Coaches Corner, brought to you by our friends at the Michigan High School Hockey Coaches Association. I am joined today by the head coach at Norfolk High School and the president of the Coaches Association, Ryan Otzenmacher. Ryan, welcome back to another season of high school hockey. Yeah, thank you. I'm really looking forward to it. Uh, excited for our partnership again with uh, state champs and uh, ready to get the season going. All right, let's talk a little bit about you guys last year. You know, it was your first year at the helm at Norfolk, so just talk a little bit about that. Yeah, I mean, it's been about a calendar year. So last year I thought uh, we performed well on the ice. I think the biggest growth for us was off the ice, uh, developing the culture that we want. So we're a year in now. Uh, the guys that I have here, the captains, uh, they've, they've been a big part of that process because you know that obviously X's and O's matter, but the reality is you win inside the locker room and... I think we finally have turned a corner. I think uh, last year we had a great group of seniors uh, that helped sort of pave that way, and now we uh, have guys that are continuing to push forward, and the, and the culture is, is, is getting to where it needs to be. I caught up with you at the recent KLAA Media Day. Just talk about this conference as one of the toughest in the state. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I love the KLAA. Um, you know, I've been a coach now in the league for 17 years since really the beginning of it, and it's just it's a community-based league. The competition night in, night out is, is arguably as good as it gets in the, in the state. And it's just a good group of coaches too. Like I look around the room and you know these guys have been around the game. They understand the game. They're in it for the right reasons. So I, I feel super fortunate to be part of it and uh, looking forward to another great year of KLA hockey. All right. So you're the president of the Coaches Association. Is there anything new that, that the high school community needs to know about for this season? Yeah, uh, number one is just uh, so we understand the board uh, is filled with some tremendously hardworking uh, individuals. So we have Steve Witt um, in Midland. We have uh, Joe Ford in Cap City, Dan Giacchino in Calumet, um, and then Executive Director uh, Don Wright. And the amount of time that those guys put in to, to better the high school product. So big shout out to them. In terms of, of new things, there's not a, not a lot new um, right now. Obviously, the Minnesota travel thing that was new last year. I think we have some teams taking advantage of it this year. Uh, that new travel rule really kind of expands the footprint of where we can travel because prior you go to Minnesota but if there was a team from North Dakota there for example you couldn't play in that showcase now with the restrictions lifted on that I think it opens the doors a little bit for our teams to venture outside the state and play uh, play some different competition um, so I think that that's exciting in terms of new initiatives and we'll be bringing some proposals to the MHSA this year but uh, obviously none of that would take place for the next couple of years here. I asked this at the MIHL Media Day, and I asked all the kids and the coaches this. How much of the growth of high school hockey coverage, media coverage, that you have seen over the last decade, obviously through state champs with Hockey Time, just talk about the growth of the coverage of high school hockey. And do you think that it will help, you know, getting that convinced that kid that, that's in, on the teeter of playing AAA or high school hockey, does that help? Showing the coverage. I, I think it does for sure. I mean, the reality is, is that you look at the coverage of high school hockey, the number of clicks that we get, whether it's through state champs or the Michigan High School Hockey Hub or through Twitter feeds through different schools. I mean, it, it, it's in the millions. Like, it, it, it literally is, uh, you know, when we look at our, our website stats or our state champ sites, people are looking, they're interested. Uh, and it's not just from Michigan. So uh, for any player that's out there, the opportunity to get noticed is just um, exponentially higher when you come to the, the, because there's just so many eyes on you from so many different levels. So uh, I, I think so. Uh, we're fortunate, obviously, a partnership with you. And lastly, I always ask each coach this, why do you love coaching high school hockey? You know, uh, I, I moved a couple years ago, obviously, to, to Northville. It's where I live. Um, my daughters go to school in Northville. Uh, high school hockey is, is, in my opinion, it's the right model. Uh, you get to play for something that's bigger than a team from year to year. You get to play for your community. You get to play for your school. You get to play in front of your friends. So all of that combined with good quality hockey, I think it's, uh, it, it's the, the right route. And uh, I'm exceptionally passionate about it and uh, looking forward to another year. Thank you very much again for joining us here on Hockey Time, and good luck to you guys. I right, appreciate it. Thank you again for all the support. All right, so that was our Coach's Corner, brought to you by our friends at the Michigan High School Hockey Coaches Association. All right, so we're going to continue on here, Sean, and let's talk about the KLA. Yeah, you know, it's intriguing. I think... Right now, there's a top three. And, and you know, I think the top two, I'm going to go cowardly, okay? I, I think no particular order. I think uh, Heartland, Brighton, Brighton, Heartland. 
And I think Howell is a solid number three right now. And then you have a bunch of teams that the potential is there. You were just talking to Coach Ossenmacher, and we have said this on the show many times. I'm going to continue to say it. Northville is going to be really good really soon. Well, really soon might be sooner than we even thought. We saw them against Novi. Heck of a game. uh, Great atmosphere. Props to both Novi and Northville. Uh, That McCallum kid is the real deal. Boy, I like that kid. Um, I I thought his hockey sense was off the charts. Coach said in the locker room after their win against Novi, he probably played for like 47 minutes. I was at 51. Uh, It it was – I I thought he was outstanding. You know, they have a bunch of solid returners as well. And uh, I'll I tell you what, if they get the kind of goaltending they did that night, uh, look out. I think they're going to be interesting. Uh, I saw how there's a jump in their play. Make no mistake about yeah, that. Yeah, Rocky's done a good job, man. He, he's it done, starts with the varsity jacket, man. Those varsity jackets are slick. Man. He's done a heck of a job there, and that's a talented group. But uh, Keep an eye on the Highlanders to be sure. Had a chance to see Heartland last night. I told Coach Gadwa, I, this is a typical Heartland team. They move the puck so well. And, and, you know, the thing that jumps out to me is those kids, it's almost like they play as if it's an honor to play for Heartland. Yeah. I mean, really. And they, they play hard. They play the right way. They move the puck so well. And then Brighton. I mean, uh, who can forget the legendary performance uh, of Levi Pinella last year in, in that game against Heartland? Um, I think that, you know, you, you got to start with the top line. You know, obviously Duff and, and Petit are, are two guys that we've talked mm-hmm. about for a few years now. But I think they're deeper than they have been in the last couple of years, and that really makes it intriguing, not just for the KLA, but uh, for for uh, high school hockey in general. I, I know, boy, coaches don't like me saying things like this, so I'm going to go ahead and apologize to Coach Cavisto and Coach Gadwa. I think they're two top five teams right now. Mm-hmm. Uh, make no mistake about it. We'll have rankings out uh, next week as – you know, John, I like to yeah. let the dust settle a yeah, little yeah. bit before you do some of that, but – to me, I think they look like two top five teams in the state. And then you got Plymouth, you got Salem, you got Livonia Stevenson in the mix too. Coach Mitchell has a young team, but you've seen over the years he's coached them up. I, I think Dallas and, and AJ, AJ. And, and and the crew at Plymouth. They got Flynn Boyd back, their goalie. Are we going to see like the bench press again? There's another kid that, that don't be surprised if he doesn't end up on the list. I really liked his play uh, last year, and I, I like – that teams play and it's a process I think they're going to continue to go like that so um, you know the 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 newness of the Red Stallions continues as well you know those guys coming together Novi has some good pieces you know I know we talked about it I think Medico is a is a, a, a guy to watch uh, I saw Jake Vellucci's premier performance last night but I'll tell you what he doesn't play like a freshman he he looks like a tower of power back there on the blue line and I I think Dane has his heart in the right place and is doing some things so KLA no doubt about it one of those conferences to watch again and let's talk about the conference next door to him the Lakes Valley Conference you know South Line Unified Milford Lakeland. Lakeland had a good run last year before losing to Brother Rice in the regionals. I've heard good things about Lakeland. I, I want to go see some of those good things as well. I'm going to make an effort to see that. Uh, keep an eye on South Lyon, though. I'm telling you. Keep keep an eye on South Lyon. They're, they're off to a good start. They're 2-0. Um, I, I think Dennis is a heck of a coach. There's a good buzz there. John, uh, you know this. Uh, one of the best locker rooms in the league. I'm, I'm telling you, it's a fantastic locker room. But on the ice, I know that's where they want to get things going. And, and, and Dennis has them going in the right direction. I've heard nothing but good things, and I want to go out there and see it for myself. Let's talk about the OAA. And it begins with Clarkston. You know, they're off to a good start. They beat the defending Division Three state champs. And you got Stony Creek. They had a good run last year. Got Lake Orion, Birmingham Unified, just good talent in the OA. Yeah, you know what? I, I think I like going out to their media day because you get a chance to talk to the coaches and you see how earnest they are. And I say that positively in 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 creating something special. And you're right, whether anybody wants to admit it, it starts with Clarkson. They're off to a three and one start. 
They're loaded again. I mean, we saw how good they were last year. They aren't going to creep up on anybody. I think the word is out. A pretty good weekend with Stony Creek and Birmingham coming up, so that'll be a good test for them. Stony wants to build on what they did last year. Don't forget the last couple months of the year, um, we were talking them up, and it's not very often teams can make us look good, but they made us look good with a good run last year. They're off to a 3-1 and one start. Uh, Birmingham, I'm, I'm really intrigued to see what they can do. How about this string, Johnny? I was looking at the calendar. They have Allen Park, M1, and Clarkston in a four-day span. Those are three good teams, so we're going to find out a lot about them over the course of the next four days. And and Lake Orion, off to a one-and-one one start. There's talent there. Make no mistake about it, Johnny. If you remember, we saw some of that young talent out at the showcase in Trenton last year. Big test and finding out what they might look like. They have, uh, you know, the always well-coached uh, Detroit Country Day coming up. So it'll be an interesting year in the OAA. We can't forget about the M1 Griffins. And, you know, we have... You know, Farmington United as well. I'm going to say it again. I like what these guys are doing. They're putting in the effort. They're going out and grabbing players. Uh, Farmington in particular, I think when you look at where they were two years ago and where they are now, I think that's only a sign of where they might be in the future as well. So that's pretty cool to see. And let's talk a little bit about the Macomb Area Conference, Sean. Yeah, you know, Chip Valley is one that jumps out to you. They're one and one to start. Uh, there's a big weekend coming up, Ike and Lance Cruz. So uh, I, I like that a lot of these teams are playing each other early and, and, and you know, testing each other at the same time. Ike, same thing. Another big weekend coming up. They have Chip Valley and Rochester United. Lance Cruz off to a three and one start. Big weekend for them. They've got Anchor Bay. They've got Chip Valley. So, yeah, you know what, Johnny, to me, let's find out what we're all about. Let's play each other early on and, and, you know, kind of mount these games in in close proximity and everything. Another conference, Sean, that you're seeing go like this each and every year, and and, and things will shake out a little bit over the course of this weekend. Sean, I want to touch quick about Lance Cruz Unified and their goalie, Nate. I saw on Twitter his hair. That was, like, legendary. I shared it with you. You know, that is a good flow. You'd like to see that, no doubt. And, you know, if, if listen, his play is anything like the flow, uh, look out. I think teams beware. But, no, it's fun to see. I love, I love that guys are getting more active in the social media and, you know, tagging people. And, you know, you're getting the likes. You're getting the retweets. There's a buzz about high school hockey. And I think we, and when I say we, I mean the collective. Yeah. I think we all have to be better about sharing some of that buzz and some of the great things that are happening. Now, Sean, have you ever had hair like that in your lifetime? I think you've seen some pictures. I've had, yeah, it's, there was, uh, I was down to there before. Yeah. I got that picture, you know, wearing that Habs coat where it's just like, uh, honestly, it was like three years. I, I didn't get it cut. It, it like a beautiful waterfall, just a beautiful waterfall coming down. And I wish I had the guts to do it again. I think my wife might divorce me, but uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I wish I had the guts. Yeah, to- I think the longest I had, it was like here. Uh, the pictures on the screen right now is from my freshman year of high school, 1996. That's just majestic, man. Mm-hmm. Look at that. Down River's finest right there. Sean, do we feel like another challenge is coming? Should we have these kids like submit videos or pictures of their hair? It could be long hair, it could be mullets. What do you think? What that could- sounds good to me. Uh, you know, that's the kind of stuff you start to tweet that out. You know, you, you keep a, a flow chart. See what I did there? Um, no, I, th- I think that'd be fun to do. No doubt about it. We can also have coaches involved. You know, Chad Clements at Trenton. You know, look at his hair over the years. Jordan at Byron Center. Listen, I, I think coaches can be involved in this hair, I, I made a crack when I saw Chad last year. I didn't look like Chad. It was right after he cut that hair because, I mean, he had just a beautiful mane and everything. And he the short hair, I said, who are you? What have you done with Chad? So, no, you're, you're absolutely right. That's the fun stuff that, that I'm so glad that uh, you're letting and the boys have fun, and I think it's fun for a lot of the fans. Yeah, well. I don't think like Dave Mitchell can participate in that, or even like Kirk Avisto in that long hair challenge. I don't think so. I've known Mitch for a while, as you know. I think he's had pretty much the, the same haircut yeah. for the amount of time that I've known yeah, him. I don't think Coach Kalanicki can do it either, because I think because they do have a hair policy at Detroit Catholic Central. So if he had a hair like the kid at Lance Cruz Unified, I don't think they'll allow him on campus. It'd be funny to see. It That would be 
Yeah, that would be funny yeah, to see. Yeah, because I'm trying to think, like, what other coaches could be involved with this, but we'll let the kids do it. Yeah, yeah, let, let, the, let the kids do that, no doubt. Time now for our Warrior Hockey Player of the Year update. So, Sean, the tradition continues of you putting on the gloves. Well, you know what? The tradition continues of our friends from Warrior uh, making this possible. Cannot thank them enough. So many good players over the past, gosh, John, 11 years. It's, it's incredible when you think about it, and we're pretty pleased with this initial group of this list in the 23-24 season. We're gathering up all the pictures and the quotes for our voting page, and the voting will start next week, Sean. So it's going to be exciting times. Yeah, it is. And, and, you know, I remind people each and every week because, you know, every year there's somebody new to this process. And what about this guy? And what about that guy? This is fluid. This will change. I promise you, I can guarantee you as sure as I'm sitting here, okay, what this list looks like today is not what the list is going to look like in three weeks, is not what the list is going to look like in February, is not what the list is going to look like come March. It's fluid. That's part of the beauty of this game is you see guys move up. And I don't want to say guys move down because the the caliber of play can stay the same, but somebody can jump up. Make no mistake about it. So we're pretty pleased with this uh, list to start the year, though, John. Um, they're, They're as always, is debate, but I, I think at the end of the day, the guys that we talked to felt pretty good about this being the initial list. So again, voting will start next week on our website at statechampsnetwork.com. And that was our Warrior Hockey Player of the Year update. And I'm here with Levi Pinnell from Brighton High School. I caught him up here at KLA Media Day. Levi, welcome to Hockey Time. Uh, it's great to be on. All right, so let's talk about last season. You guys made it all the way to the state finals for the second year in a row. Just talk about that season. Um, it was obviously a pretty special year, uh, making it to the state final for the second year in a row. And, uh, and playing in front of all those fans, it's awesome. It's an awesome thing that the MHSA does, and uh, it's just a really special event. And just talk about your goaltending play throughout the season. I came off to a slow start a little bit, and then uh, we ended up picking it up as a team, kind of, and uh, my defensemen started helping me out, and um, I was able to make some good saves for the team. I joined you guys on the Up North trip. Just talk about that, and how cool was it to go up north last year? It's really fun. Um, It's a really special thing that we get to do. We go up there and we play Calumet, and then we switch off with Hancock and Houghton every year. Um, it's something we've been doing for the past 20 years or so, and uh, it's special that we get to go up there and do it. Now, the karaoke was fun, the yeah. capture there. You got, we got a lot of views off of that. That's a fun thing we do. We, uh, we take like a trivia test of all the old Brighton High School stuff and then just some hockey trivia, and whoever like, gets the worst score on the, yeah. on the test has to do karaoke. So it's a fun thing that we get to do. And just talk about quickly, we surprised you at the school in April with the Wall Awards. Just how cool was it for you to win it? I was extremely honored to get that award. Obviously, a lot of coaches and a lot of people uh, went into making that decision, and I was extremely honored to be able to win that. And uh, to be able to do it in front of all my peers at the school is really cool. You're going to be coming in as the defending champion. Not many have done that with our awards. So, you know, how cool is that? Pretty cool. Obviously, I'm going to have to put in put in the work uh, to try to hopefully win it again. And there's a bigger trophy that's on my mind right now, though. Just talk about this year's team. What's got you guys excited for this year's team? Um, we got a lot of returners, and uh, we got a lot in, we got a few new faces that will bring a lot to the team. And um, we're really excited to see what we can put together. And just talk about playing for Coach Cavisto. It's an honor. I mean, obviously, he's, uh, he's a great coach, and he's been in, around high school sports for a long time now and it's really it's an honor to be able to play for him. What do it mean for you and the rest of the team to win it this year? I mean it would just mean the world obviously losing uh, two years in a row um, there's a f- quite a few guys on that team as sophomores and uh, so we have a lot of motivation coming into this season and uh, it would just mean the world f- for us to be able to get one. Thank you very much for joining us here on Hockey Time and good luck to you guys this season. Thank you.
It's time now for our wall word update brought to you by our friends at Warrior Hockey. So Sean has the gloves. Are you going to put on the helmet? No, I'm not going to put on the helmet, but uh, I'm going to leave that to somebody else. Maybe the guys on this list. John, I want to say this about this list. We felt pretty good about the player of the year list and, and, you know, getting it to its finality. This one was a little bit more difficult to whittle it down to 10. There are some names and a couple of them we mentioned during this show that, that were this close, but I will say the exact same thing. Um, what this list looks like today is not what this list is going to look like. Maybe even in a couple weeks or in January or February or in March, uh, there's an opportunity for you to play your way onto the list. There's an opportunity for you to move off the list and then move on the list and then win the award like we saw happen last year. So there were a couple guys that we mentioned, and I have no problem mentioning them now. I, I think uh, Flynn at uh, Plymouth and uh, Pete at Forest Hill Central that, that were this close, uh, but at the end of the day, we had some decisions to make, and who knows? Play the way that you know they're capable of, and, and maybe they're on the list sooner rather than later. And we always live by the criteria. Yeah, that's exactly it. And I mean, I'm going to put it on the screen right now because yeah, I edit the show, so I'll put it up right now. And I'm glad that you're doing that. Uh, this is this is – this is our creed. Make no mistake about it. We, we follow this to the T. And when we have our conversations at the end of the year, this is part of it. And I have to remind the guys on our committee that, that you know, don't work for state champs. I have to remind the guys as we're having this conversation, you've been privy to some of those conversations. Hey, don't forget, guys, we give a little extra bump to that guy that performed in crunch time. So going back to last year, if you watch the state finals, there was debate None to be had over Peter Rosa winning that award uh, the way that he put on the show, the way he did in that Final Four. There was no debate to be had, again, following our criteria. So um, that that's kind of our creed, and, and we're going to stick to it. And, and you know what? Keeping with this award, John, I mean, the way that Levi played, I mean, who can forget that performance that he had against Heartland? That gives you the extra bump. So, you know, at the end of the year, we can say, look, this is our criteria. Look what this guy did. And to do what he did in that game gives you that extra push. And a lot of times that's the difference between a guy winning and perhaps not winning. Voting for the Wall Award will begin next week at our website at statechampsnetwork.com. And that was our Wall Award update brought to you by Warrior Hockey. All right, as we continue on here on Hockey Time, let's talk about the MIHL conference. It's off to a great start. Well, listen, make no mistake about it. The MIHL is the best conference. I, I don't think anybody could even debate that. I think in years gone by, you could make an argument, maybe the KLA, KLA, MIHL. Uh, heading into this year, make no mistake about it. it it's the best conference. It's got the best team. CC is still the team to beat. Coach Kalanicki and his staff do a great job of bringing guys in and, and developing them, and they're, they're as deep and, and talented as ever. But, but Johnny, I, I look across the board. I, I think Trenton is, is going to be a team that it's is going to take a big step, man. I, I saw a lot of those kids over the summer. I mean, they, they are loaded with talent. UDJ, we talked about them early on. That is a team that has all all the 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 promise in the world i mean they, they it it's up to them how do they want it to go because the talent is there uh, and they have to fulfill that promise i'm really intrigued my, my old buddy at at warren de la salle uh chad larose absolute sniper uh, back in the ohl and i even got a chance to see him in the nhl i think he's going to do great things with with de la salle Brother Rice, uh, Roma Valera, uh, Kenny's another guy. Yeah, I know, I know everybody and their brother. Well, what do you do? You, you lose all those kids from that championship team, kids that were there for a long time, including the big two and Rosa and Marone. Kenny and his staff will, will find a way. Make no mistake about that. It's loaded. I mean, across the board, it really is. And I've heard nothing but good things about Orchard Lake St. Mary's. I have not seen them yet, but I've heard up front they're very talented. Obviously, they have one of the best goalies in the state. Um, it, it, I mean, every night is a battle 
in the MIHL. And, and, and this year, uh, John, no debate about it. This is the best, the best conference out there. And let's not forget about the Southeastern Conference. You have Chelsea, you have Celine, Ann Arbor Skyline, Ann Arbor Pioneer. Some great hockey in that area. Celine, uh, Coach Z uh, Zagata, of course, is um, you know he's he's building something there. He's got some talent. Chelsea, as you know, had some losses. Let let's see how they absorb those losses. You know some. Talented players, uh, you know, uh, played their last game out there. Uh, the Ann Arbor area, I mean, Skyline, obviously one of the best players in the state. I mean, he's on the list, according to the coaches. So uh, that's interesting how it goes. Let's see if Huron can keep going up. Yeah, John, there's so many good stories right now and and areas and pockets that that the game is really coming on. And uh, it, it's, it's a special place to be right now. We're going to wrap it up here with the Metro Conference. So, Sean, Riverview gave her a shard, Ann Arbor father gave her a shard, Allen Park, Country Days in that mix, some great teams that coming out of the Metro Conference that, that make good runs in the playoffs. Yeah, you know what? Uh, Riverview, Gabriel Richard, I mean, they've been on the map for a few years now. I mean, we I know you and I have both, I like the way they play. This is a Ricky DeSana team, make no mistake about that. Uh, another team that had a lot of losses, but you've seen them absorb those losses in the past. Off to a 2-0-1 start. Uh, Clint Robert, great guy. Uh, he's got his team off to a 2-1 and one start. They have a big test coming up with Flint Powers. I'm intrigued to see how that goes. I know their loss. I want to give a tip of the cap to Divine Child uh, for, for winning a big game against AGR. Allen Park is a team that I think they've played a certain style over the years. They have one of the best goalies in the state. What a great start they're off to. 3-0-1 start. They've only given up three goals. I think that's a testament to the way that they're playing and the play, and the play that they're getting from their goaltender. And then I'll tell you what, DCD, I've said it once, I've said it a thousand times. I think Frank is one of the best coaches out there. Uh, he is a guy that continuously finds a way to get – the talent out of his kids and have his teams go like that in, in a short span. So yeah, no doubt about it. Don't overlook those teams and don't overlook that conference. Yeah. Cause you have Grosseal, you have Gibraltar Carlson, why not Roosevelt? Grosseal was a team that, that found a way into the rankings last year and rightfully so. And, and they keep uh, taking a step up and, you know, Roosevelt has such a, a, a proud, um, history and you know trying to get that brand back on point so yeah it's a heck of a lot of fun there's so many good stories going on in high school hockey this year john and and, and it's a pleasure to be able to tell some of them time now for our rapid fire segment our preview ahead to the weekend so sean quickly on the top games of the week let's start off with northville versus brighton on friday yeah that's a huge test for for northville i mean brighton as i said uh, one of the top five teams in the state. How far has Northville come? We'll find out. Byron Center taking on Salem. Love that matchup. Uh, Byron Center has been one of those teams anytime, any place. Uh, you know, this is a situation. Uh, Salem, let's see what happens uh, in regards to um, them taking that next step. They made a lot of noise last year. Boy, the best way to make noise this year is knock off a team like BC. And on the west side of the state, East Grand Rapids taking on Grand Rapids Catholic Central. I love that matchup. Uh, I'll, I'll say it again. I wish I could clone myself to the best on the west side. And how about Marquette at Saginaw Heritage? Yeah, great matchup. Uh, you know, I, I again, a couple of young teams. Let, let, let's see how quick it takes them to play the way that they their coaches want them to play. All right, we head up north. Traverse City Central is taking on Houghton. Love that one. Can I clone myself? That's two. Um, well, you're up to three now. Okay, three. So, no, uh, listen, Houghton hasn't missed a beat. TCC, great two tests for them this weekend. Howell at Hancock. Howell's the same thing. You know what? I like what I saw out of Howell. I got a chance to see Howell. Uh, Hancock is a team that looks to take that step back up. Let's not forget some of the great teams that they've had in the past. I've heard a lot of people say they're on their way back. We'll find out exactly how far they are in the process. So on Saturday, we have Brighton taking on Saginaw Heritage. Yeah, great one. Uh, you know, you're talking about, you know, guys that uh, from both teams that can make a claim to be amongst the best players in the state. What more can you ask for? And we got the Catholic League Championship game on Saturday. Yeah, you know what? We don't know who he's playing yet, but we have an idea. Well, Catholic Central against whoever they play will, will be an interesting matchup. And, and, and you know what? 
that could be open. You know, we, we've we seen some upsets in the past. We've seen some teams, uh, you know, find a way to to win the game. But, no, I'm, I'm with you. I, I Listen, I would be dropped dead shocked if Catholic Center wasn't there. I, I think they're the best team in the state again, and they've got a chance to prove it. Trenton taking on Houghton. Awesome. Fantastic. Great. Heck of a lot of talent, both of those teams. It's not easy to go up to the D and play, and there's a, a home ice advantage there. Big, big test for the Trojans up there. How about Alpina taking on the Bay Reps? Yeah, I'm intrigued at that one. Alpina, you know, a heck of a lot of talent there. Off to a good start. Bay Reps, uh, there's as much buzz about them as as any team out there. And that is a good way to find out, you know, how far things are. They're off to a great start. Do you knock off a team like Alpina? In the Lansing area, East Side Stars taking on Jackson Lumen Christie. I love this. I, you know, we were talking about them earlier and the fact that, you know, there's there's so many of those, I don't know, cross-pollination games going on right now. So a uh, great opportunity to see where those teams stack up at this point in the season. And lastly, on the west side of the state, the first time that Forest Hill Central is taking on Northern Eastern. Awesome. You know, uh, as I said, uh, McSween is, is, has another loaded team. Uh, let's see what Coach Bissett has. I've heard some good things about them. There's an opportunity there uh, for the Bird Dogs to make some noise and have some people talking about them. That is always a fun game when those two get together. So, Sean, welcome back. And we're just so excited to be talking about high school hockey each and every week now until March. Yeah, looking forward to it. It's always so much fun. We'll get together every week except that little break uh, around Christmas time. And as always, we appreciate you watching and we will make sure to see you at the rink. State Champs Hockey Time is presented by Lawrence Technological University. Be curious, make magic. The future of education begins at ltu.edu. State Champs Hockey Time is also presented by Alta Equipment, Michigan's number one construction equipment provider, proudly representing the industry's top brands. Get the right equipment for your project every time with Alta Equipment. Warrior Hockey is proud to support Michigan High School Hockey Player and Goalie of the Year awards. Warrior Hockey is made for this. The Michigan High School Hockey Coaches Association, celebrating the 50th anniversary of high school hockey in Michigan. For schedule, scores, and standings, go to the hub, mihshockeyhub.com. The Michigan High School Athletic Association, promoting the value and values of educational athletics. And Michigan Army National Guard, proud sponsor of the Michigan High School Athletic Association.